Ton of points are meant for Rick Rolling Ted. Come on. Exactly. You could use it for something fun. Only one. Ah! Ted, I will fight you. No Rickroll could ever surprise me because I am immune to them. Yeah, nice dark background. It's a video. We're going to watch together. Video. It's selling scares. Weenie, what do you think about telling scares? Spooky. True. Six most disturbing forest encounters caught on camera. Are you ready? Let's go. In January 2015, a group of New Zealand film students were recording outside their school at Auckland's Parnell Railway Station. New Zealand. That's like next to Australia, right? That's like the wrong side of the world. Times will pass to pass to have unreal that can hurt you. <laughs> oh, they, they, they're far away, man. They're so far away. Footage you're seeing now was recorded by a student named Chris Welcome. Muir. Welcome! For a few minutes, Chris and his friends were messing around and having fun as they filmed. But that's when the group spotted a man and a woman wearing creepy white masks hiding in the tall grass next to the station and staring- What the frick? Wait. What is that? That's weird. What? Okay. Staring ominously at the camera. Oh. I'd be so out of there. <laughs> they just stand there menacingly. As it was later revealed, Chris and his buddies first thought that the masked people were probably pranksters from the school trying to creep them out, which is why they can be heard laughing throughout the footage. Yeah. However, the students later confessed that it was more so nervous laughter and that they were actually pretty terrified during the encounter. They need to tea pose. <laughs> it's, it seems like a prank. That must be a prank, right? Disturbingly, looking at the footage, they noticed that the couple appeared to be armed. In some of the clips, what? it looks like one of them is holding a pistol. Oh, Wacom. Wacom. That's bad. That's bad. Where's the other one? In New Zealand, yeah. Where's the other one? But it was 2015. Was there any was there any gun laws? Like, didn't they get stricter in the recent years? I'm not sure about 2015. I don't see him. As soon as the suspects got a little too close for comfort, the group ran back to the main road, after which they reportedly saw a police chopper approaching the area of the incident. Oh. It's not entirely clear who called the cops that day, but based on my research, this wasn't the first time the couple had harassed the public with their creepy masks and weapons. That's weird. Earlier that week, they had That's a weird a hobby to have. Domain park, but left what before the police were able to arrest them. When the cops arrived at the train station, Chris and his friends gave them the report, after which the Auckland Police Department uploaded a Facebook post where they urged the suspects to come forward and warned civilians to stay far away from the masked couple if they saw them. What a weird hobby to have. My theory is that they are drug dealers protecting the area. That could be something, yeah. It's weird though. They also cautioned that if they saw someone carrying Welcome. what appeared to be a weapon, they had no way of knowing if the weapon was real or fake and would be forced to approach the situation as if it were real. Shortly after that, the suspects reportedly came forward to talk to the cops. Throughout the investigation, the authorities didn't release a whole lot of mm. information to the public about who these people were, whether the their weapons the were real, or what their intentions were. But one thing we know for sure is that this wasn't just an innocent prank. In fact, when a lot of people online started accusing the students of staging a prank just to get attention, a spokesperson from the school came forward to clarify that the mass suspects had nothing to do with the institute. Aww. According to an article from Vice, a police spokesperson later confirmed that They're not the best source, but <laughs> I don't know. I find I find humans to be scarier than any ghost or any potential ghost. I always find humans to be the scariest thing on this planet, <laughs> personally. That the weapons were fake. But I wasn't able to find any Hard official agree. confirmation of this. Mm -hmm. And to this day, not a lot of people know who the suspects were or why they were terrorizing the public for no reason. Whatever the case, it's a good thing Chris and his friends were able to get away before things took a turn True. for the worse. True, yeah. People are unpredictable, yes. Yes. Near the base of Mount Fuji and they're in real. Japan lies a forest that's known among the locals as... I mean, I... You know, I... I believe in some paranormal stuff. I, I had experiences and I still am more scared of humans and I because they're you know, they are hundred percent real. They're always real. <laughs> they always exist. They're always a danger. The sea of trees. 
Interestingly, the entire forest grew out of a 30 square kilometer patch of hardened lava that was Ooh, laid down by the last so major cool. eruption of Mount Fuji. Yeah, no a doubt more there. Disturbing exactly. though, uh, over the years, the Sea of Trees has become known as a place where people go to what take their nice own lives. Forest. And if you venture far enough into the forest, it's not uncommon at all to find a body. Near the oh, is that? But that's not the other forest. The other, the other Japanese one. That's another one, right? This one is a different forest, right? Because this one looks very unique with the floor. Yeah, it's a different one, right? Entrance of the forest, a sign written in Japanese reads, Quietly think once more about your parents, siblings, and children. Please don't suffer alone, and first reach out. In July 2017, urban explorer and YouTuber Burbex ventured into the forest to see what he'd find, walking his viewers through his entire journey I'm not sure if it's the same trees. forest as the one that's like But even though the video infamous. starts out tame enough, just a few minutes into his exploration, the uploader comes across an abandoned bike, and that's when things get a little disturbing. I don't wanna, I don't wanna to be, wait, is it just going to be a bike? I hope they don't saw anything weird. I don't like that. <laughs> I hope they don't. Can I say it? I don't want to see a long pole situation here. I'm only a few meters away from the road right now. <coughs> but uh, <coughs> I've already found an abandoned bike. It's actually a pretty um, nice bike. Let's take a look at it. Cough, cough. I don't know if it's the same forest. It's. I don't it think it's been here a long time. What do we got in it here? It feels like Chilling Scares would have mentioned if it was that exact forest because you just have to mention the name or, you know, but he, it didn't sound like it was the same forest the way he described it. Does that make sense? Like he could have just said the name and stuff and people would have known, but he described this forest so differently. And, uh, it's a packet for a knife. That's I not I've weird at all. I think I've found some kind of note in a bag. It says 12-11... I can't quite make out. I think this is somebody's name just here, and I'm not sure what this means. Can someone read that? Can someone read that? I cannot. My Japanese sucks. No On sense. top of the bike, Burbex finds an empty piece of packaging for a kitchen knife. And a few minutes later, he comes across the note written on a plastic bag. Maybe, maybe telling scares had the translation, wait. The note translates to 1211 verified, Fuji Yoshina police station verified, meaning it's likely evidence of someone who abandoned their Telling scares got our bags, let's go, he had the translation. ...stuff to take their own life in the forest, confirmed by the local police station. It's incredibly haunting to think how many lives have been lost in that forest over the years, and even more disturbing to think that any random passerby could easily find the body while exploring the terrain. Over the years, the Japanese government has implemented several measures, such as placing security cameras near the entrance to track those who walk inside, as well as training volunteers to talk to the visitors who are thinking of taking their lives. But Still, this hasn't stopped people from following through with it. And the fact that the media has really played a big part in sensationalizing the forest in recent years hasn't helped either. Why didn't he just... So, okay, why did Chilling Scares... Now it sounds like it's, you know... Why didn't he just explain... Then, yeah, it's that forest then, but why didn't he just say the name and explain it properly? Like, he made it so, out of respect, the name isn't exactly polite. Yeah, makes sense, I guess, but... He described it so weirdly. Like, I never, when someone talks about this forest, they usually don't talk about the fact, like, a lot. Like, you often don't hear, hear them talk about the fact that it was, like, grown on volcanic uh, minerals and stuff like that. Like, it, it's weird. The way he described it sounded like a completely different forest to me. Welcome. 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 In early 2023, a man named David Meredith was taking That's his usual weird. evening stroll through his neighborhood in Red Deer, Canada, when he suddenly saw a bull Canada. moose eating next to a tree. Hoping to catch a better glimpse, he hid behind the tree to watch. And that's when the moose turned around and started charging at him. Moose, uh, they are so dangerous. The moose are so freaking dangerous. They are so strong and they're unpredictable. They can just, you know, if they don't like you, they will show you that they don't like you, man. They are scary. 
To understand how incredibly dangerous this is, keep in mind that an adult male moose can run faster than 35 miles per they hour, are so which dangerous. is almost twice as fast as the max speed for the average human male. Even though moose aren't generally aggressive, they can easily trample and kill a human if they feel threatened, which mm. is probably what happened here. Fearing for his life, David hoisted himself off so the tree big, next yes. to him to avoid getting stabbed by the moose's antlers. He just ran me up a tree. He is relative, relatively small with smaller antlers, thankfully, because, oh god, they could be... They can be so huge. It's insane. Oh, he's on a tree now? Oh, that's, ba that's bad. Oh, we don't have any- we don't have, uh, moose- mooses? Is it mooses? Is it meese? <laughs> like, goose, geese? We don't have them here. We don't have them here. Uh, I always thought- we have them in, like, parks. Like, we have this wildlife park where we have, like, a couple of them. But we have- we don't have them here naturally in Germany, I think. Moose is singular and plural? Oh my god. As soon as he was out of the moose's reach, the he started you know. recording. For about 30 seconds, the moose just stares at David, and you can hear the uploader's nervous breathing as he waits for the moose to leave. The more you know. But shortly after, the moose starts charging back and forth with its head down, which is a clear like sign this? that it's stressed mm. and would probably trample David if he were to come deer, down or yeah. fall from the tree. We have deer over here. Oh my god, that moose is angry. I'd piss my pants. <laughs> Based on what he mentioned to the news station that interviewed him a couple of days later, I'd David stayed pants. in the tree for over 10 minutes waiting for the moose. Oh, news station. I, I thought he said moose station. And I was, I was like, is that a news station for incidents that have m moose in them? <laughs> oh, I, I was really... <laughs> We have geese, they are enough of a menace. Exactly. Geese are dangerous, man. They are dangerous. To leave Moose him alone. <laughs> when asked how he climbed Hi, up the welcome. tree, he demonstrated how he pulled himself up by 24 a 7 moose cover it. <laughs> yes. Flimsy looking branch, which is honestly one of the most concerning parts oh of this God. whole situation. Welcome. That branch breaks, and David would have been at the mercy of a very angry moose and might not have lived I to tell the died. tale. I would have died. Luckily, after seeing that David wasn't coming down, the moose finally gave up and ran off, thanks to which the uploader was able to come down I safely would have died, after waiting man. it out for around an extra half hour. I have a big respect for animals like that. In February 2018, a man named Greg Harris uploaded a GoPro video of himself riding his ATV on an unnamed trail. For the first few seconds, the footage shows pretty much exactly what you'd expect from this kind of upload. But in the blink of an eye, something extremely disturbing interrupts Greg's ATV ride. Well, I don't like this. I'm a little... Oh, probably a wire. Yeah, I don't like this at all. This stresses me out so much. Oh, it's probably a wire, man. If you didn't I hate catch those. it, someone had set up a metal wire between the two trees, so which got caught in the uploader's helmet and forced him to stop. It's pretty disturbing to think that if Greg hadn't been so lucky, he could have been those... decapitated by the wire. So Fortunately, weird. as mentioned in the video description, his speed along with the it wire hitting his so helmet much. instead oh, of his neck bad. caused it to break as he passed through it. It might seem shocking that anyone would even think of doing something as incredibly it was really evil lucky, as setting yes. up a lethal booby trap in the middle yes. of an ATV trail. But sadly, it's actually pretty common in the dirt bike and ATV community. Sometimes these wires are set up by people trying to keep bikers off their property. Others are set up by psychos who get irritated by the noise and decide to use violence to fix the issue. That's and the so rest are dumb. set up by people who are just messed up in the head and want to bring That's home so to rude. That's so no illegal reason. too. Hi, in this home. case, it's, it's impossible so to tell who is responsible for setting up the like, trap. Imagine you set up a trap, any t type of trap, any type of booby trap. You have to do that with the consciousness that this might murder someone, like someone could die. How do you do that without thinking of that and feeling bad about it like 
do you not have any empathy for another life that you will take? Like, huh? What's wrong with you? Crap. This is just one of those videos where if the wire was set up just slightly lower, the accident could have easily been fatal. Luckily, he was able to walk away with minimal injuries, like how can you and he used his video as a way to warn others it. to watch out for these kinds of traps, especially when riding through trees. Back in the summer of 2014, a man named Chris was biking in the mountains near Fernie, British Columbia, when he suddenly noticed what appeared to be an animal approaching him in the tall uh -oh. grass. Immediately, he realized... It was a mountain lion, yet. and that's when he started. Oh no! I don't know if you that's can see dangerous. It, but there's a mountain lion. Why does he stay? If I would see one, I, I'd be already turned around going. Like, I'd be, I'd be gone. I'd be, why, why do they always stay in film? I don't get it. Why do they always stay in film? He's crouching in the grass. Like, as long as he's still so far away, you can at least, like, slowly back away and go, right? Don't. Don't just He's actually film. coming towards me. I would be gone as long as they're At still first, far away. At first, it's kind of hard to see where exactly the animal is. But as Chris walks towards the trail, you can see it emerging from the grass coming closer. Oh, God. And it blends in so well, too. Look at this. That is a mountain lion. It blends in so well. And he's stalking me. Even though mountain lion sightings are rare, they have been known to attack people in certain situations. And let's just say, if you see one stalking you in the tall grass, slowly approaching as it stares you down, you can be pretty certain that you're in danger. About two minutes into the footage, uh -huh. the lion starts walking a little faster, and Chris does the one thing you never do with a mountain lion by turning his back and uh -oh. starting to run. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no, will this go good? Oh, this won't go, this won't go well, right? Hey, Mr. Mountain Lion. How oh, are I you doing? I don't like this, I don't like this. Nice to see you. I don't like this. Nice to see you. I am much bigger than you. Over the next couple of minutes, Chris tries to get the animal to like go away, but it only walks around him. He doesn't understand it if you just say, I am much bigger than you. I don't think the lion understands. He continues to stalk him, staring him down in the tall grass near the entrance to the woods. I don't think he understands. A couple of minutes later, the uploader manages to take a few steps toward the main trail back to his car, but he doesn't get too far before the mountain lion cuts him off again. Mia versus lion? I'm not fighting Stay a lion. Back. Stay there. I'm not fighting a lion. You cannot make me fight a lion. Nope. 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 Not doing that. I'm not that. afraid of you. Fortunately, after a few moments of tension, the mountain lion turns around and disappears into the trees. Being in oh. a position like that has to be downright terrifying, God, especially God. when you consider that the only reason the lion didn't attack was because it didn't want to. And had it felt more threatened, it easily could have done some serious damage. Thankfully, it was just a close call, and Chris oh, was able to walk away from the terrifying pants, encounter man. unharmed. I would have pissed my pants. In March 2019, God damn it! No, I'm I'm not fighting a lion, guys. You cannot make me. A five-year-old girl from Fairlawn, New Jersey, was playing with her friends near a creek in a wooded area behind their home, right off Route 208. This was an area the family knew very well, as they had been living there for 13 years, and the girl's father, Dave Kuroda, and his wife felt completely safe letting their kid play in the woods behind their house. Yes, but right? at some oh, point yeah. during that particular afternoon, the girl came across- I wouldn't- I just don't go into nature anymore, Matt. Like, where I used to come from was like in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a forest, right? And even there, like, we're in Germany, so we didn't have anything like that. We don't have mountain lions, we don't have wolves, we don't have any of that. The deer we have, they run away. They are scared. The like the scariest thing you can find is a wild boar. And even there, people would always be like, "Oh, you have to be careful. You have to do this. You have to do that." Like nowadays, I I don't know if I would go into that forest again. I don't even know. I don't even know how to handle myself anymore. I've been in the city for too long. This stuff scares me. It scares me.
crossed a pile of clothing in the woods, after which she immediately ran back to tell her dad what she had found. Strangely, the clothes appeared to have been cut off a person's body, and there were suspicious red stains all over the tattered, shredded outfit. Like After that. confirming the bundle consisted only of women's clothing, Dave called the Bergen County Sheriff's Office like and reported that at the all. incident, feeling like it was just too out of the yeah, ordinary I'm a city for a random girl pile now. of cut-up clothes to appear near the entrance of the woods so close to his home. I don't like this Even at all. Even though this was the first time their daughter saw the clothes, it appeared they had been in the woods for several months, which explains some of the excessive wear and tear but not the suspicious cuts and stains all over the outfit. Immediately, Fairlawn police started asking the public if they could identify the clothes, hoping that it was just a prank rather than like something this. more sinister. Unfortunately, nobody came forward, and until the clothes can be linked to some sort of crime or to a victim, they can't be accepted for testing by the police department. To this day, the cops from the Fairlawn Police Department haven't been able to match the clothing to anyone in particular. But can I not and take at the- at this point, all we can do is hope that whoever those clothes belong to- Can I not take the clothes to for- like, just check if it is blood or something at all? Who it did not come to the heroin That's really weird that, the that they cannot- reddish stains imply. Like, why do they not check the stains, you know? That's weird. Yeah, you could check it for DNA, you can figure out who it is from, or if, if it's even blood at all that's on- Ah! Sorry. <laughs> I moved set and I couldn't see you for a second. That scared me. <laughs> like you could, you could test it for at least to see if it's blood. What if it's blood? I like the forest videos and stuff like that because honestly, it's so Welcome. scary. Welcome. Welcome. It's so scary to, to be in the middle of nowhere and be in danger, you know? Because being in the middle of nowhere and you, you don't even, you don't even know if you can get help over there when something happens. That's just scary.